Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Since all week last week was about what I have prepared for my kids to learn this upcoming school year, I thought that I would take today to share what's inspiring and encouraging me to learn, to be spiritually challenged, and what I am seeking to read and find comfort in during my downtime. So before I get into today's video and share what is in my summer mom morning basket, I wanted to say thank you to The Good and the Beautiful for partnering with me on today's video. The Good and the Beautiful has a bunch of great resources on their website to continue learning all summer and to work on essential skills. And so they asked me to pick a few things from their website and I found some really fun stuff that I'm going to be using for my kids' quiet time this summer to encourage them to continue learning but to also help them uh, get back into the habit of having a good quiet time because as I will be sharing my mom morning basket with you, uh, we as a family are just trying to get back into the habit of having quiet time, having downtime, and just working on refining some habits that we kind of lost throughout the last school year. So I know my kids are gonna be really excited to receive some of these things from The Good and the Beautiful, so I'm gonna show you what I picked so for them. the first thing I picked off of the website is this flower study, and it comes with this flower game. This looked really fun. So the flower game is kind of like a go fish type of game, or there's a couple different ways to play it, but the way that I found most interesting for all of my kids was to play it like a go fish type game. So that is super cute and it also comes with this flower study book. And it's a beautiful book and I know that a couple of my kids in particular will really love this because I do have some little budding botanists in my house. Not me, but them. So that is the first resource I got for them from The Good and the Beautiful this summer. The next resource, now I've always loved their books and also their book lists. They have some great book lists and some really amazing books on their website. Um, so I chose this, A Wolf in the North Woods. This is a level two book from them. And I got this for my, my youngest son who loves all things like woodland creatures and animals and all of that. So um, we are getting ready to go on a mountain trip. We go every summer and of course he's talking about foxes and wolves and bears and all of that. So I thought that he would like to have this to read this summer and it is just the perfect level for him to read. So I got that. Next, I got Drawing 100 Fun and Easy Trees. Now, my brother loves The Good and the Beautiful, and so he was talking about this book that he had gotten for his kids, and his kids really enjoyed it, and I thought this would be like the perfect summer quiet time activity. So there are just literally 100 different trees in here for them to learn how to draw. My oldest is just such an amazing artist, and um, my other ones want so badly to follow in her footsteps, and the different little drawing prompts in their uh, handwriting books from The Good and the Beautiful um, always help them and encourage them, and so I thought that getting them that 100 Fun and Easy Trees would be another fun resource for them. And then last but not least, I got the creating, Creative Writing Notebook number one and Creative Writing Notebook number two for my older two kids. This looks so perfect. They love to, they, they are constantly taking my stapler and paper and coming up with making their own books or their own comic books or like they put together plays and things like that. So I thought that this creative writing notebook would be so good for them. So there's a descriptive writing practice. I just think it would be good for them to have some more guidance. There's some more ideas, colors. Let's see what else is in here. Writing exercises story starters, things like that. And then the um, notebook number two says it, it's a similar format. Writing for fun. This section will guide you through activities that will spark imagination, kindle creativity, and help you enjoy writing for fun. It does not go in any particular order. So the book number one I got for my son, Jesse, and book number two I got for Isabella. There's flash writing. Story number one, this section will guide you through create, creating story ideas using one of these ideas to write a story and then refining your story. And it's just really colorful and I think a really fun summer activity book for them to use and to continue working on their narrations and composition skills and things like that. So those are just a few of the things that The Good and the Beautiful has on their website that would be perfect for summer learning and to work on some key skills. 
Uh, I just grabbed five of them, but I will list a bunch of them down below if you want to check them out. So thank you so much, Good and the Beautiful, for partnering with me on today's video. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my mom basket. I got this basket from Target. This actually came, I ordered two of them and I thought they were smaller. I just did like a drive up pickup and when I got them, they were much larger than I expected. I wanted to use them as laundry hampers for our towels um, and I just didn't want them to be that big on the floor. But then I realized that it goes really well with our bedroom decor and so I cleared off our nightstands from the stuff we had on there before and I put these up and they're really cute in our room. We have, it just, it goes perfectly with the decor in our room. So they are big, but as you see, John and I are book lovers, we're book collectors. One of my girlfriends recently said, I see you have the gift of collecting books. I'm like, could you please tell my husband that that's a gift <laughs> because I don't think he sees it that way, but he's actually the same way as well. So we both love, we're both in a ton of different books at the same time. Like we do some together. He has his books he's reading on his own. He has the books that he's reading through with his junior and senior guys. He has books spiritually that he's reading through and books that, you know, just he loves to read about Florida history. So he's got tons of books as well. So I'm not the only one to just, I don't know why I felt like sharing that. Maybe just to give myself a little bit of uh, insurance there for all the comments. But anyway, um, yeah, John and I both love books. And I tend to be somebody who's in a lot of different books at the same time. Every few months, I kind of take some out and start fresh with some other ones. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I finished other books either. It's just my personality. I really like to be in a lot of books at once. Um, so if you're not that way, please don't look at this giant basket of books and think like, oh my goodness, I am doing nothing for myself spiritually because Abby in Florida is reading 34 books at the same time. It's not true. It's just the way that I like to do things and it's a little bit like ADD and that's just the way my brain works. I like to be in a lot of places at once. So that being said, I'm going to go through and share what I have in this basket right now, things I'm reading daily. Some of them will be repeats because you guys have seen them before. Um, you know, things I just have always read throughout my marriage or throughout my parenting journey, kind of on the daily. Um, some books I've cycled out and back in again. Some books like summer is just a better season for me to read them, but I've shown them before. And then some are kind of new. So here is what I am reading through right now and what is encouraging me in my mom basket, school basket, whatever you want to call it. So first of all, I have my Bible in here. Now this is a basket that I like to have on hand. I keep it next to my bed, like I said, because I do like to use it for my morning time, but I also like to use it as a home base for when I need to retreat, when I need to have some afternoon quiet time. I'm trying to be more, uh, set more boundaries for myself as far as like turning off technology and just having a personal quiet time in the afternoons as well. Um, it's something that I think I shared it in my goals video last month, but it's just something that has always grounded me and helped me be refreshed to then turn around and do an afternoon and evening after homeschooling during the day. Um, and so while I do read my Bible in the morning and sometimes I'll do a Bible study and read some prayers in the morning, the majority of these things are there for me in the afternoon and also in the evenings when John and I get in bed. We both like to read in bed. So it's this basket is not necessarily just for mornings, but it is just a home base for things that will give me encouragement. I think a lot of times I'll catch 10 minutes and I'll just get on my phone because I don't know what to do or I will like... I don't know, I don't even know what I do half the time, like stare at the wall. <laughs> but when I have a place that I can keep things that are encouraging and inspiring to me, I gravitate toward that basket a little more often and I find more time to read things that encourage me. So I have my Bible in there. I'm going through a one year reading plan with my church. I'm way off. I wanna just be fully transparent and say, I'm not gonna be done with it by the end of the year, but I am going to just stick to the reading plan in order. Um, and I'm much further now than I've ever been as far as following a Bible reading plan. It's transformed my life for sure to be in the word daily. It's not a habit that I was in for a good chunk of my adult life and I love it. So I keep this right next to my bed. The other thing that I do that goes along with my, my morning quiet time is the power of a praying parent, the power of a praying wife. I've shared this every time I've shared one of these videos with you, but 
I love just going through one of these prayers each morning for John and praying over my kids. It's just important to me. I've done the workbook for this one before. It was great as well, but right now I'm just reading through the books, the prayer books. Um, so those are the things that I usually do in the morning. The other thing it's back here is, uh, this is new now. I just got this from Anna Vance. This is, uh, what is the name of this? I think it might be her Rebecca journal. I'm going to link it down below. Um, but she just sent me new planners and journals and things for my kids. And so this is one that I picked out to use for our personal Bible studies. And if you want to see, I have it in our family subjects video. Um, but I'm going to be using this as my Bible journal for this homeschooling year as I teach my kids the habit of Bible journaling as well. So I have that there. And then one other journal I have in here, this is my commonplace journal. Um, I'm part of a school A group and one of my girlfriends who headed up the group encourage us to all have a commonplace notebook where we jot down things, quotes, ideas, things that inspire us. And that was a great new idea to me. It was something like I would jot it down throughout notebooks and not have one location for it. And so I had this old journal. I don't know where I got it from. If I can find it, I'll link it, but it just says she's clothed with strength and dignity. And that is my commonplace journal. Um, so then here's the other stuff that I have that I just gravitate toward when I'm wandering during my day and I need something to inspire me or encourage me. Um, I have this book, Stepping Heavenward. Now I know I shared this, but I kind of fell off the wagon with it recently. And so I'm getting a new one from Lamplighters called Fastened Like Nails. And I wanted to read through this one before I read that one. So I have a little bit of pressure that's gonna get me to read through it. Um, but this was written in 1869 by Elizabeth Prentice. And this is just one that I know is loved through the generations. So I have that, um, and then that's the only like novel, I guess, that I have in here. I also have For the Children's Sake. This is one that I have not read before, but it was recommended to me um, because I loved Mother Culture, so I have that in there. And sometimes reading like homeschool encouragement is best for me to do in the summer when I'm not in the middle of homeschooling because it kind of refreshes me. Another one that I really love is um, Pocket Full of Pine Cones. If you've never read that, summer is a great time to read that as well. And I have a bookstore on my Amazon site of just different books I love. So if you want to see some of my favorite summer reads, um, I will, I'll link that down below. Um, the next thing I have in here is Laying Down the Rails for Yourself. You guys know I love Laying Down the Rails, so I grabbed Laying Down the Rails for Yourself. Another thing that I find fun to flip through are these 100 Best Love Poems. I'm trying to find one that I want to be memorizing right now. And also, Then Sings My Soul is a fun one to just read one hymn daily. And it tells the stories of the different hymns. And this is how I make hymn selections for my kids right now. I'll read through some, and then I'll pick like the story and the words of one that really spoke to me. Ah! I just dropped all my books. Okay. Um, anyway, so... Uh, then I also have Professionalizing Motherhood. Now this is one I have started and stopped for years. I've probably had this book for 10 years and I'm really excited to read it. Um, again, summer is the best time for me to read some of these things, but I've also noticed that there are some things that I want to take charge of and regroup on. And so I think it's a good season of life to read this. Whereas in other seasons of life where I'm more on top of our house and parenting and just a little bit more self-disciplined, uh, this would be a little redundant, but right now I'm trying to get back to that place. And so I thought that this would be a good read. Um, speaking of self-discipline, I also am reading through the Trim Healthy Mama book. I have all the books now. I just invested in everything <laughs> and um, I'm making my way through this book right now. I read the first quarter of it the day it came in the mail and then I've been reading here and there. And I really like this book. This has been really good for me. Um, the Trim Healthy Mama method has been positive for me so far. Um, then the other thing that I just like to read in bits and pieces, again, like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, if I catch a minute and I just wanna find something to read, this is a book that was recommended by a girlfriend of mine and I shared it in my spring basket. I'm not done with it yet. It's All the Plants of the Bible. And this is really fun. Again, if I can only catch a minute or two to read, um, it goes through the different plants in scripture and why, um, they're symbolic or important or just information about the plants and then where you can find them in scripture. And I just think that that's some interesting knowledge to have scripturally. And so there's that. 
And then the other thing I have in here that I just like to kind of read at random is, uh, let's see, I guess my address is all over these. Let's see if I can find one, here we go. So I have my Wild and Free subscription, which is a digital subscription, but they send you a print every single month as well, a print sampling. I love this book, this is my favorite. This is my favorite resource to grab when I am just having an afternoon coffee. I also always have a copy of Runner's World and then Tea Time Magazine. Not that I make all the recipes in here, but something about this magazine is just one of my favorite things. And so I love looking through that magazine and sometimes finding recipes that I want to use in our poetry tea times. But for the most part, it just makes me feel like feminine and cozy and happy. So I love reading Tea Time Magazine. One thing I forgot to mention when I was showing my morning Bible study, this is new to me to be doing this as part of my morning Bible study. It's been a while since I've done a daily study on top of daily scripture reading, but Making Your Home a Haven, this is by Courtney Joseph. She usually does this in the fall and I've done it many years alongside her. But this year, like I was saying with the Professionalizing Motherhood book, I've noticed that there are some things that used to be on the forefront of my mind that have not been on the forefront of my mind lately and it shows in my home and so i decided to go ahead and do this on my own a couple months before she typically does it i think she usually does it in like october um, but for me back to school time is a time that feels cozy in like fall anyway it's also the time that i take typically to establish routines both for myself and the kids and homemaking routines and things like that and so i wanted to go ahead and do this study as a refresher so I have this Making Your Home a Haven Bible Study by Courtney Joseph. It's very simple and it's really cute. Every week you do something like lighting a candle every morning and it's symbolic of something or putting flowers on your table and it's just like little tangible ways to um, make your home a haven physically but also spiritually. So I love this study and it's one that I'm just going to do to kind of like refresh my heart a little bit as a homemaker. And then here are the things that John and I are reading through together in the evenings. Um, we're still reading through the Five Love Languages book, um, and we're also doing the Love Language Minute devotional. And then we just finally got our hands on the Five Love Languages of Children, or we, we had it, but we didn't start reading it because we were really starting through with this one. And because again, it's summer, I'm not doing school with the kids, I'm kind of seeing them on a more personal level. Homeschool moms, you know what I mean. Like when you're homeschooling, you see them every day, but you don't necessarily um, see, I don't know, like just, you have a different, I don't know, different focus during homeschool, I guess. And so for me, this is a season that I can just like see them eye to eye, make eye contact, have some really good heart to heart time with them. And so it's the perfect time to be reading through this as well. And then a couple of other things that are in here. The first thing is this blanket. This is a cashmere blanket that I got for my grandma when, let's see, I think it was like her 80th birthday. I remember being so excited that I could afford a bl this blanket for her. She loved really nice things. And um, this is really special for me to gift to her. It's my dad's mom, my mamo. And she passed away shortly after and I got this blanket back from my aunt and unfortunately it's been stained up it's the one that i've kind of used like as decor in my living room it's always matched my style a little bit and um, so there's literally slime stains on it and like just memories of nursing my babies and having this blanket on us there's literally it's just there's no fully cleaning this anymore but it's my favorite so blanket years and years ago i was in a women's ministry bible study at my old church and one of the older ladies was talking to all of us younger moms. We all had a nursing baby with us. We were running back and forth to the morning nursery. And she said something along the lines of how when she was younger or when she was a mom and her kids were younger, she couldn't ever find a place to have quiet time. So she used to sit in her rocking chair and just throw this blanket over her head. And her kids knew that she was praying and having her Bible study. And so that's just something that struck me and it encouraged me as a young mom that like it doesn't have to look picture perfect. And so while I keep this in my room, sometimes I'm just looking for a cozy spot that's not in my room that's full of everybody's laundry that needs to be sorted and the last room that ever gets cleaned and on and on and on. And so I put this blanket in there for the moments where I'm out here and I am just trying to find a place of peace in the middle of our chaotic home. Um, and so this is like my little cozy blanket that I love using when I'm having my quiet time. 
And then last but not least, I have our little my little cup of oils. So I've got a highlighter and a pen as well. Um, I've got my morning oils that I use like Endoflex and, um, well, it's deep down or here it is, um, Progescence Plus, those are my morning oils. But then I also have oils just for like whatever time of day it is, whatever I'm needing, <laughs> just quick comfort. Um, so I've got Valor and I've got Peace and Calming, which I probably get at the most. I've also got Grounding. Um, I have Gentle Baby, it's my favorite one for the evenings, especially because sometimes Annie's in bed with me while I'm reading to her and also reading myself. Why Angelica for the days that I'm like super running to my room for a little peace, like ah, <laughs> and stress away. So that is what is in my mom basket, my Scully basket, just little bits and pieces of things depending on when I go to the basket that are just a home base for things that encourage and inspire me. Um, so I just wanted to share those things with you. Like I said, I will link some other books down below that I, I love throughout the year as well that just don't happen to be in this basket right now. Let me know down below what some books are that really encourage you and when you find time to read those books or find some encouragement throughout your day. And thank you so much, Good and the Beautiful, for partnering with me on today's video. I'll see you guys later. Bye.